As a modern digital creative, the cornerstone of what we do is done on our display. One of the specification of our display that I like to discuss here is called contrast ratio. Many of you have gone out and calibrate your display to find out that the contrast ratio, once you calibrate the display, has dropped down below what the factory specification for the panel is. So in this video, what I'm going to talk about is why that's happening and also tell you how the factory or how the manufacturer in this case is measuring the specification for the contrast ratio to list on their specification page. I'm Arch Suan Sang, BenQ Ambassador. Let's get started. Before we start, please subscribe if you are new and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload cool new videos like this. Contrast ratio. It is definitely the specification that you probably have seen on the spec sheet of your display. If not, it is something that you probably have looked at closely before you purchase your display. So contrast ratio is really important in photography and video work because in general, it gives us an idea of the gray tones that this display can show. In this case, I have with me BenQ SW271. This is their 4K hardware calibrate display. So this is one of their pro line displays that BenQ has. And the display manufacturer in this case would generally list contrast ratio in two different ways. The first way is that they will list contrast ratio as native or static contrast ratio. This is when they measure the contrast ratio of a static image from white to black in this case. Or the other way that the manufacturer will do it is list the contrast ratio as dynamic. The moment they start to list the display contrast ratio as dynamic, the numbers start to go up significantly and it makes it seem that this display is really a great display. And they are. The problem is that dynamic contrast ratio tends to be overinflated. So now that we understand a different type of contrast ratio report on the spec sheet, let's talk about how the display manufacturer go about to measure these contrast ratio to put that value on the spec sheet. So in this case, take this panel for instance, the SW271. This panel is able to go to as bright as 350 nits or 350 candela. So in this case, what they would do is they would take this display and pump it at 100% brightness, measure that white point at 100% at 350 nits, and then dim down the display as much as possible so that it is close to black as possible. And then they would measure that black value. They would take those two numbers, divide them by each other, and in this case, what they would get is a contrast ratio that they will put on the report sheet or on the spec sheet of a display. So for instance, the SW271 here has the official contrast ratio of 1001. The thing that we have to think about and constantly remember is that as photographers, as video professionals, what we don't do is run our display at 350 nits brightness or at 100% for that matter. So in this case, as photographers, I always recommend that you go in and calibrate your display to between 80 to 120 candela. So if you really think about it, let's take the value, the middle ground here of 100 candela. That's about three and a half times darker than the display specification. So in that case, if you start to measure the white at 100 candela, and then measure the black point. If you do the mathematical computation there, divide those two numbers by each other, you're gonna find out that the contrast ratio on your display has come down so much from the factory specification. And in general, that's not really anything to worry about. In this case, it's okay. Primarily, if you're still able to get a great calibration, one that passes validation, and you're able to still do good work on your display, that's the most important thing here in this case. So for instance, I have run the hardware calibration on my SW271, but BenQ Palette Master Element doesn't report contrast ratio. So what I have done here on top of that is run x i one Profiler so that I can get a contrast ratio report and see what is able to achieve. So in this case, when I run the calibration, what I have done is list the contrast ratio so that the display will go to native. But in this case, if we look at the contrast ratio that, that I was able to achieve from this display, the native contrast ratio of the target here, the achieved target was 292.619 to 1. So this is less than 300 to 1 contrast ratio compared to the specification of this display that is supposed to be at 1000 to 1 contrast ratio. So in general, I probably wouldn't worry about the contrast ratio on a calibrated display so much. What I want to make sure is that I'm able to get good, true, accurate colors out of my display. And that's the main reason why we run the calibration. 
And the other thing too is because when we calibrate our display, we have dimmed down the display brightness by so much. In this case, because we want to make sure that our display brightness is equivalent to a printed image or it will look great on other displays that are out there or when people are viewing your content. So in this case, I would say don't worry about contrast ratio. If you ever run a measurement on it so that you're aware, that's great. Just remember that when you calibrate your display, that contrast ratio will never reach factory specs. So anyway, I hope that you find this brief explanation on contrast ratio helpful and also put your mind at ease at the very same time. Please give this video a like if you find it helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you are new. Hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload cool new videos like this. And until next time, I just write.